Hi, I'm Steve Goodman, and in this video, you're going to learn everything you need to know about Microsoft Teams in five minutes. So without further ado, let's get started. So I'm over in the Microsoft Teams window now, and I've got all of my normal stuff. The first thing that you need to know about scheduling a Microsoft Teams meeting is you want to go into a Microsoft Teams meeting using the new meeting experience. You can do this by clicking on your face in the top right and choosing settings. Once you've clicked on settings, make sure the new meeting experience is ticked. If it isn't, tick it and then close and relaunch Microsoft Teams. There's several ways to start a Microsoft Teams meeting. Now, first of all, you can go into Teams itself and you can choose the meet button in the right hand corner of your channel. Now you'll see I'm inside the design channel here and I can choose meet and choose schedule a meeting or meet now. If I choose schedule a meeting, then I can put an appointment in the diary and of course invite people to the meeting. I'll add in Nestor Wilk, I'll send an invite over and we'll also see our new meeting scheduled in the channel itself. I can also go into my calendar if that's where I prefer to schedule meetings from and I can choose to create and schedule a meeting directly from here. So if I click on new meeting and schedule meeting, then I can pick one. Let's pick a little bit later on this evening, 9.30. And I'll add in Nesta again. And I'll send that invite over. So once I've scheduled a meeting, then what I can do is go and update the meeting option. So if I click on this, that'll open this up inside a web browser. And this gives me the options to decide who can bypass the lobby. So at the moment, this is set to only me. Most organizations might pick either everybody or people inside my organization. That means that once I've started a meeting, people can join uh, if they're logged in to their own organization account, if we pick people in my organization, so everybody in your company, and if I have everyone selected, then that means that they can get into the meeting by just clicking the link. If I want to make sure that only I can go in first, and then I have to admit people one by one, then I pick only me. We can also choose who can present. And for meetings scheduled in our calendar, we can pick specific people or only me. That means that they won't be able to present their screen or share content to the meeting unless we make them a presenter mid-meeting. Most people will choose people in my organisation. So let's join a Teams meeting. So I'm going to press join and that's going to join in the new meeting experience which pops out into a new window. What you'll notice here is I'm using background effects. So I've picked my audio device which is a good Plantronics team certified headset and I've got my mic on. If there's a few people in the meeting already it will automatically mute me. So don't forget to join muted if you don't want to be heard as you joined and because I've had my video on before in a meeting then it's picked my video to automatically be on again this time and it's showing me what's going to happen before I join. I can click on the background effects button here and I can either choose to blur my background or I can upload my own image. If you do upload your own image remember that it will show reversed on the screen here because it's like a mirror but it will show the right way around to everybody in the meeting and I can choose one of the built-in pictures if I want. So if I want to look like I'm in a uh, weird uh, world behind me or if I want to pick something like a, a normal office or show people my flashy home then I can do so. It'll remember that from meeting to meeting as well which is really important so you won't have to remember to set this every time you join a meeting. So I'm going to join that now and I'm in the meeting. So now I'm in the meeting, I've got a few different options. I can show my participants and I'll be able to see everybody that I need to admit. I can access uh, the permissions for the meeting. That will open up the meeting options page we saw before and we can see the attendee list as well. I can also look at the meeting chat. This will persist after the meeting, so it's great to share content that you want people to be able to see after the meeting. If somebody chooses to raise their hand in the meeting to ask, ask a question you'll see in the participant list who's raised their hand and we've got additional options for meetings here where we can choose a large gallery view to show up to 49 people if there's more than 10 people in your meeting this will be lit up 
and together mode. So if there's five people in your meeting, you'll be able to switch on together mode to see everybody sitting as if they're all in something like a cafe or if they're all in a lecture theater together. And we've got options to change our background effects mid meeting and we can turn on live captions and see uh, live subtitles alongside our meeting for the hard of hearing. And we can start recording so there's a copy of our meeting to watch later. Now we're going over the uh, five minutes just about so I'll finish off by showing you the sharing settings. The sharing settings are great because they allow us to be able to share our desktop either a desktop itself or the window and we can upload a PowerPoint from OneDrive into the meeting and share that without having to share our screen or we can use the whiteboard and then we can collaborate mid-meeting. When you're finished in the meeting remember you've got the choice to leave the meeting or end the meeting. Ending the meeting will kick everybody out all at once. So that is Microsoft Teams meetings. Thank you for watching the video today. Don't forget to like or subscribe to practical365.com.